Hi there, Tim Bauer here from LiveVideoGuitarLessons.com with the practice tip of the day. This one is for the intermediate player, and today I want to talk a little bit about playing and singing at the same time. Um, uh, at some point, you're, you're probably going to want to learn how to accompany yourself while you're singing on guitar. It can get pretty dull just, you know, strumming chords. There are lots of other things you can do on guitar, but the strumming just chords by themselves, I mean, that gets old fairly quickly. So anyway, um, so the, the main thing that you want to do, you want to... Um, take a, a song that's very simple to start with, because it, it is actually, it, it's, it's pretty easy to play and sing at the same time after you're used to it, but it's pretty difficult, not pretty difficult, it, it's, let's say, fairly difficult at first to, um, to learn how to, how to strum and sing uh, simultaneously, because you're doing two different things at the same time. And um, what you want to do, you want to take a song that's simple to start with, you know, not, not, not a whole lot of chords in it, and um, you want to be really familiar with the song. Um, it make sure that you know sing it with the artist a couple times and then take a small section of it like a verse or a chorus or something and make sure you can sing that section without the artist so you want to be really familiar with the song so you're not like you know while you're trying to play guitar and sing it at the same time you're not kind of hunting around for them for the melody you need to know the melody just like backward and forward all right so we take that simple song or the section you've been working on and then we make it even more simple I mean really simple because the idea is that we're trying to get it where we're concentrating almost none over here. Sorry, uh, somebody must have called the police on me for uh, this video. No, a little ambulance going by. Uh, sorry about that. Um, anyway, so uh, I, I'm not a, an expert on you know how the brain works or anything. I'm just uh, just colloquially as, as I watch people learn how to play guitar, I have a, I think a pretty good understanding of what's going on. Um, it, it takes an enormous amount of, of your brain's computing power, uh, for lack of a better term, just to, for language, I mean, just to speak. And on top of that, we're, we're not only speaking the words, we're singing the words, and we're having to pull them out of our memory. So there's a lot going on just with the singing part. Um, uh, so the idea, and th these are just random numbers, I, I think they're roughly in the, in the right neighborhood, but, I mean, you want to get it where you're concentrating about 90%, you know, most of your concentration is on your, your singing. So that means we have to get the strum, or we can do it concentrating on it almost none, you know, 10%, you know, just, it takes very little thought. So what we do, we just make it really, really simple. So we take that simple song, I'm just going to take something, I don't want to play any, anybody's, um, you know, an established song, or I, I don't want to uh, violate any copyright laws by broadcasting somebody else's work on, on this video here. So we're just going to write a song real quick. We're going to take a simple chord progression, let's do G, E minor, C, and D, you've, you've seen a million songs of those four chords in there anyway. And we're just going to write a simple melody um, while we're going. And we're going to take our strum and make it as almost as simple as possible. And what we're going to do, we're just going to strum whole notes. And just quick theory, um, you should know this already, but uh, we're going to work in 4-4 four, four time. You shouldn't know that, but most songs are in 4-4 four, four time, which means each measure gets four beats, so four clicks of the metronome. And that's what whole notes are. A whole note, you hit once, two, three, four, five. So each, each time we change chords, it, it, it lasts for the whole measure, then we change chords again. So if we take our simple song, and we, we just, um, I'm just going to hum a, a melody here. Just, we'll write one as we go. Um, uh, so I'm going to strum my, my G chord and let that hold the whole measure, and it's just going to sound a little something like this. Na -na 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 And that, that's our little simple melody. It's probably not going to be on the Billboard charts anytime soon. Just something looking for something we can work with. All right. So what we're going now we're going to make the strum a little more difficult, but not super diff not a lot more difficult. So now we're just going to strum half notes. We're going to double the number of times we hit that. So we're going to hit on beats one and three. So one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two. So anyway, um, so it sounds a little something like this. Na -na 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 Guess where we're going next? We're gonna we're gonna do quarter notes. Same thing. And just get where you can do that. And then uh, you know you might put some kind of a you know the regular strum to it, whatever the strum is of the song you're working on. Um, I'm trying to think of what a regular strum for that would be because there's nothing. I mean we're just writing it as we go here. But you know you might do something like. Um, uh, and that would be 
now you're up to where the song, um, the way it was was recorded. And you just kind of build it up, and, and as you go through those steps, you get where you don't, um, where it's not so taxing on your brain, and, and you, um, that's probably not the right way to say that, but you get where you, you're just better at thinking about two different things at the same time. And, you know, when you watch somebody playing guitar and singing, they're, they're thinking very little about the strumming. They're just, you know, I mean, they're thinking some about it, but it, it's not uh, foremost on their minds. So one, one way to think about it is I, I like to draw the analogy. It's like, think of your brain as, as your computer. You know, if, if, you're, um, if you're running, uh, you've probably done this before, you know, you're running lots and lots and lots and lots of way too many programs all at the same time. You have, you know, five web pages open that are doing something in one browser and you got eight open in another one and you're playing a game and you're doing a spreadsheet, you have your, you know, whatever, you're, you're, um, uh, you've got some word processing going on. And then your uh, um, your 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 um, your internet security um, software decides to uh, do a, a quick scan of your you know schedule scan of your computer. Everything just shuts down. You know the, the, the uh, you know the, it's taking up too much CPU. You, your your computer's overloaded and it just you know nothing works. So think of your brain that way. That's maybe not a great analogy, but you know you know if you have too many things going on all at the same time, you can't do any of them. So that's why you, you make the the you make one part really really simple, so you focus on the more important part. And like I say, once you do that a little bit, it doesn't take very long to get get used to that. But you know, go through that process, it will get you there a lot faster. And e even after you've been playing for a long time, you'll occasionally run across a song. Um, this is particularly true with bands that have singers who don't play guitar, or if a song was written by somebody who's, who doesn't play guitar, or um, you know, like a lot of the rock bands are this way. They'll they'll um, I'm not sure what the writing process is for everybody, but um, I'm not going to quote any examples, but you hear it in classic rock a lot. You know, the, 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 the rhythm of the song is drastically different than the melody of what the singer is singing, and those are hard to see. Even if you've been singing and playing for years, it, it's hard to get used to. I mean, the, the rhythms are so different, it, it, you have to kind of go through that process again with those songs. I, you know, I've run across one of those, I don't know, every... 500 songs. I mean, it's not that common now. I've been doing it a long time, but you know, you just get better at it as you as you go. So anyway, just kind of keep that in mind. Have fun with it. Um, and again, I don't give vo uh, voice lessons, but um, I, I tell you one thing real real quick. I've seen a lot of people they come up and sing. I try to get people to come up and sing with me in the show. And the number one thing, uh, in in my opinion, as a guitar teacher, not a voice teacher, and when you're going to sing, sing like you mean it. If you sing really quietly, you're gonna. People tend to they, they end up flat all the time because um, I don't know the, the mechanical process of singing. But when you sing like you mean it, you sing loud. Um, not to be like you're at the top of your, your lungs, but if you try to sing really quiet, it, it makes it difficult. Um, it, it doesn't sound good, especially if you're worried about sounding good. People usually do that because they're shy; they don't want anybody to hear them. And the more they do, and they don't want anybody to hear them because they're afraid they're going to sound bad. And the more you try to be shy and and, and fix it where people can't hear you and so people won't think you sound bad, you sound bad. I mean, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, so anyway. Alright, so thanks for tuning in for this practice tip. Tune in again tomorrow for another one, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.